Hey guys, and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video, we'll show you how to easily create and vectorize a rough stamp-like texture that can be applied to any design in Adobe Illustrator. Let's head straight onto the computer now where Rory will take you through the simple process. Okay, so here we are in Illustrator and this is the example of what we're going to be creating today. So you can see this is a very simple stamp effect that we can apply to absolutely any vector object within Illustrator. And it's very simple to do as well. Now, before I start, I just want to say that you can download this exact same template file from the link in the description below and try this out for yourself. Otherwise, you can always try it with your own designs as well. So over on the right hand side, we have another artboard set up just with some simple outlined text and a box around it. Absolutely nothing special going on here. And this font is called Norwester, if you are wondering. And this effect works best when we use a grey fill. So you can use other colours, but we would highly recommend going for a medium grey so in my swatches panel here you can see that this is one of the greys in the middle of this grayscale spectrum we have here and ultimately we are going to vectorize this so we can recolor it to any color we want afterwards but for the initial effects that we're going to apply stick to grey initially as it's going to work much better. Now before I start with anything it's worth noting that this effect is very much based on the size of your document and the size of the object you have set up as well as the resolution. So we'll cover that in a little bit more detail in a moment, but this is a web large document, so it's set up at 1920 by 1080, as you can see over in our properties panel, and we set the object up quite large within these artboards, so just bear that in mind that you don't want to create an object that's too small or the effect isn't going to work quite as well. So the first thing I want to do is just apply some subtle roughness to this object. So I'm going to go up to effect, distort and transform and we have a roughen option and you can see this is going to look crazy to begin with. I'm going to check the smooth option and I'm going to take the percentage right down to 0.1%. We just want this to be very subtle and I'll add a bit more detail in there. I want this to be quite rough as we go along. Those settings are working quite well. Again, this is going to be based on the size of your object. So I've set this to relative. You can equally change this to absolute. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK and go up to object and expand appearance to make sure that the path is actually following this new effect as you can see. So that's the first stage. Next I'm going to go back up to effect and apply an inner glow so I can find that under stylize and inner glow and there's a few settings here that we want to change. So first of all the mode I want to set to normal. I want to change the color here to black so I'm just dragging down to the bottom of this color picker. Click OK. I'm going to change the opacity to 100% and then for the blur amount I'm just going to bump this up and again this is dependent on how big your object is so I'm just really looking at the preview here make sure your preview is checked I'll probably go for something like 15 pixels that's looking good in this case so depending on the size of your object if you just try and match a similar look to what I have here it's going to work pretty well make sure edge is checked it will be by default and I'm just going to click OK now we have a few more effects to apply so back in the effect menu I want to go down to pixel Pixelate and Mesotint and I want to change the type here to grainy dots. So this is the only setting we can actually change within this effect and it's just going to slightly change the amount of detail within this effect. So I'm just going to click OK now. You can see that's going to quite drastically change our object here. And lastly I want to go back up to Effect down to Sketch and you can see we actually have a stamp effect here. As you can see in this preview, we're getting a much closer rendition of what we're after here. Now this is again very much based on the sliders we have up here. You want to make sure that your light dark balance is set to one. Depending on the size again, you may be able to adjust the smoothness a bit more and you will get slightly differing effects based on what you do. But I'm going to keep this at two. I think that's where we get the most detail and the best look from. So I'm just going to click OK again. So as I mentioned, this is also very much based on the resolution of your document. Now, if I go back up to effect, and document raster effect settings, you can see that this document, because it's a web document, is set up at a resolution of 72 PPI. Now I can check this down and you can see we have some other 
resolution options. If I go to 300 ppi, which is what we'd use for anything for print, and if I click OK, you can see that these effects are going to change quite drastically. And this is because these are raster effects, so they are based on the pixels within the document as opposed to the vector object that you're working with. So it's the same if I was to scale this right down, the effects are going to change based on the amount of pixels. So this gives much more detail at 300 ppi, but in this case it's probably a little bit too fine for what we're after. So I'm going to revert back to 72 ppi, and luckily it's easy enough just to switch between these via this menu. So I'll click OK. And what I'm going to do now is vectorize this. So once I've vectorized it, I can always up my resolution back to 300 ppi. If you are working on something for print, it's easy enough just to do that, but we need to vectorize it first so that the effects don't get adjusted in any way. So with this selected, I first need to go up to object and expand appearance. And now I want to use the image trace feature in Illustrator. So I can do that by going up to window and we have image trace here. I have already set up on the right hand side. I'm just going to leave the preset to default for now. I'm going to drop down the advanced options. Make sure that ignore white is on and that means all of the white areas will just get punched out, which is what we want. Now if I click preview, this may not look great to begin with. As you can see, it's actually getting rid of a lot of the detail here. So what I need to do is adjust a few of these sliders. First of all, I'm going to take the noise right down and you can see that's going to give us a little bit more detail back make sure my paths and corners are set to 100% and that's just going to again add a little bit more detail and that's looking pretty good now. So what I can do is just click expand or if you don't have that you can always go up to object, image trace and expand from there and you can see we now have a vectorized version of our object with this stamp effect applied and that's really it. I can now always select this, I can go to my swatches and change the color if I want and we can really do anything that we would be able to do with any other vector from this point onwards and it's that simple. So there you have it. This is a super easy process that you can apply to any vector design and if you want to learn more about graphic design we've created a free one hour training where we reveal our top five secrets to creating beautiful graphic design along with our six steps to making money as a graphic designer. So make sure to sign up for the next free webinar. The link is in the description. You're not gonna to want to miss it. I'll see you there.